I grew up in Brunswick for about 30 years from the mid-1950s when my parents and I settled in Shamrock Street, West Brunswick. There were a dozen different ethnicities in the street. We had an Aboriginal family, a Maori family, Latvian, Scottish, English, Greek, Italian, Sicilian, Lebanese, and everybody basically got on well. One of our next-door neighbours in the 1960s and 70s was the Tuccio family, Giovanni, Francesca and their son Giuseppe, or Joe. They were from Sicily and they were wonderful neighbours, the best you could want. Giovanni Tuccio was a cabinet maker and he worked from his garage at the back of his house. I think it was in the 1960s when my parents commissioned him to make us a huge bookcase and also a bedroom wardrobe and two single beds. Mr Tuccio's work was excellent and I kept the, the bed head and bed end of one of those single beds which would have been made 50 years ago. The pattern was laminated and it was Russian birch. Last year, I offered the bared head and bared end to a few museums, and I'm very pleased and grateful to say that the Coburg Historical Society in Melbourne accepted my offer and now has the items in good care. The furniture is emblematic of the Italianate furniture, which was common in the homes of many migrants from Italy and other southern European and Mediterranean places in the 1960s and 70s in Brunswick and, of course, other suburbs where such migrants had settled. The bed furniture is stylish and elegant. You can note the curved design at the top of each piece with the attractive gold rim and also the care that went into the feet on the bed end. Mr and Mrs Tuccio are no longer with us, sadly. While residing next to us in West Brunswick in the 60s and 70s, Mr Tuccio bought land at St Leonard's near Port Arlington and built a holiday house. I have fond memories of going there as a guest and learning how to fish for squid from the pier in the traditional Sicilian way as taught to me by Mr Tuccio. I also have fond memories of the Tuccio's wine vat and press under their house. My memory is that when the wine was to be pressed, several family members and friends would attend. I think they may have pressed the wine with their feet, but I'm not entirely sure now. But they definitely made their own wine, and I was privileged to sample some when as a youngster with my mother ill in hospital, the Tuccios would take me in each evening and give me a feed. They were very kind and generous people, uh, true Brunswick people of that era. Part of me was sad to part with the bared heads and I really held on to them all these decades, just hoping that one day that there would be a museum that would provide a home for them. So, thanks again, Coburg Historical Society.